What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Monday and uh, definitely a happy President's Day. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of people are enjoying the day off. It's been a long one. I've been... <laughs> Boy, I've been all over the place, but I'm back here at the Red Brick House. We'll be doing our live stream tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. Hope you guys tune in. We're getting closer and closer because come tomorrow, it is Happy Franchise Tag Day. Last year, we were tagging uh, Tony Pollard and um, doing, of course, getting him. The year before, we ended up doing Dalton Schultz. I don't believe the Cowboys will be tagging anybody this year. So, there's that. Uh, the Cowboys allegedly are working on Dak Prescott's contract, and I'm working on some stuff with that whole situation there um, that's kind of interesting about the Cowboys going through and doing a second mega deal with Dak Prescott, potentially, and whether or not they should or shouldn't, and looking at what has happened with other players that have been in this situation. But um, going down the road, I've got, you know, listening to uh, – different clips and things like that. And I'm trying to understand ESPN. Do we need to start saying ESPN is for entertainment purposes only and that none of the stuff really even matters? Because it just gets a little bit crazier, crazier with some of the takes in here. Some of them is just like, you know, can you just pull something out your ass and just throw it out there? And I mean, th there's no... It, it it just literally would make no sense on some of the stuff that they say. And I want to play this one because this is one that literally, you know, we've had times where people have looked at Dan Orlowski and said, like, what are you smoking, dude? You know, get off the crack pipe. And this is one of those ones with Mike Tannenbaum, you know, who, you know, you're, you're working on these shows. You're supposed to be reputable with what you do. And sometimes I'm like, Seriously? If I make a statement and say, you know, something, you know, that, that may or may not happen, I get critiqued for it and told I'm not an expert like, you know, the people that are on ESPN. You know, you're an ESPN wannabe. No, actually, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm OK right where I am. I enjoy being here on YouTube with my people, you know, that I can interact with and everything else, I'm good because I certainly wouldn't want to wear a suit every day. The first, that's the first thing. I definitely don't want to wear a suit and answer anybody. I like being able to go ahead and have my own thoughts and say what I want to say. If I want to look like I'm an idiot, that's no problem. I can do that. If I want to be here and making a, a, a video about stuff while I'm working on a fireplace here, I can do it. Let's listen to this take, and you give me, you tell me if I'm crazy. Yeah, I think he would actually be a great fit with the New York, and here's why. Oh, my gosh. Why you want to Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson? Absolutely. Pay him a million dollars and let him resurrect his career. <laughs> I actually have experience with this. What? Vinny Testaverde got cut by the Baltimore Ravens. We signed him in June and went to the championship game that year. So if you're if you're Russell Wilson and you don't get I know uh, early, Mike. Hey Bart, if you but if where, where else is he going to go? He has to resurrect his career. So if you have to sit for a year, why not sit behind one of the greatest of all times and then be a free agent again? It's when when what when I was reasons. guys, where is he going to go? He's 36 years old. No one's going to hand him a starting job. He's going to have to be a backup somewhere. The the Florham Park would be like the real husbands of Hollywood. If you have Aaron Rodgers. Rogers, Man. And Russell, you would have to put them back on hard knocks. <laughs> you have, have to. to right. do it again. You would have to. Where, 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 My goodies. Where, where, <laughs> where, where, you want to take this one? Yo, where? Where, where, where is he? Where is he gonna? Yeah, I think he would. Uh, so, so wait a minute. So wait a minute. So Mike Tenenbaum. Let me see if I get this right. So you're going to tell me that Joe Flacco, midway through the season, who was out raking leaves, got a call up about playing quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, right? Um, Kirk Cousins, who 
just tore his Achilles tendon. I've heard rumors about um, Miami might be interested in him instead of Tua and letting Tua go. I've also heard that people in Washington think that he might be able to go back to Washington. Seeing stiffs across the NFL get jobs left and right. You're going to tell me that Russell Wilson, and in fact, let me, let me look at over the cap. Uh, this is over the cap QBs. Over the cap QBs. The highest per year is Joe Burr at $55 million. And if we start going down the list, we'll get past the, the, the big names, okay? Tua, because he's still on his rookie deal, is at 30. Let's see. Tyler Heineke is at 14. Jarrett Stanham is at 10. Andy Dalton was at 10. Marcus Mariota is at 5. Justin Fields at 18. Sam Darnold is at four and a half. Drew Locke is at four. Mike White is at eight. Jameis Winston's at four. Mac Jones is at 15. Kenny Pickett at 14. Gardner Minichu, three and a half. Uh, let me see. Where do I get to the $1 million club? Blaine Gabbard, 1.3. Carson Wentz, 1.3. Davis Mills is even $5 million. Malik Willis is at five. Brandon Allen is at one. Kyle Allen is at one. Matt Barkley is at 1.1. Josh Johnson at 1.1. Trevor Simeon is at 1.1. Tyle Boyle, Tim Boyle is at one. Jeff Driscoll at one. Jake Henner's at four. Stenham Barnett, don't even know who that is with the Rams, 4.5. Aiden O'Connell's at four. Brent Rippon is at 1.08. Mason Rudolph at one. Will Greer. Will Greer is at 1.08. Nathan Peterman is at one. Let's see. Is there anybody under one? Uh, Ian Brock. Okay. Ian Brock is at 980,000. Um, let's see. Is there anybody? Let's see. Anthony Brown with the Raiders is at 9.15. Alex um, Madog is at 900,000. Let's see. Max Dugan is at 795. Nathan Rourke with the Patriots at 7.5. Jake Browning at 7.5. Chris. Okay. So let me see if I get this straight. You're going to say. Russell Wilson, be it he's had a couple of down years with Denver, who played in two Super Bowls, would literally be the lowest paid quarterback to back up Aaron Rodgers. Is that really your take? I'm just, I'm, I'm asking for a friend. I mean, I can understand what you're saying that, you know, he may not get a starting gig right off the bat, which I think is kind of crazy because there aren't too many quarterbacks that are out there. I mean, I would take um, Russell Wilson over Derek Carr right there. I would definitely do that. I would say some place like Atlanta maybe, you know, might be a better situation. And we don't know if actually Aaron Rodgers, if he is going to be able to come back and be whole right there. I would say the commanders could would be an upgrade for the commanders. I would say for the Giants that it might be an upgrade over Daniel Jones. But, of course, they got Daniel Jones's contract. I mean, you can go down the, the roster. You're literally telling me that the only job that Russell Wilson could get would be for one 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 million dollars backing up Aaron Rodgers. Who comes up with this shit?